There are a lot of questions being raised in the wake of the Wall Street Journal's reporting that Elon Musk has been in regular contact with Russian President Vladimir Putin for the last two years. We told you about this last night. The Journal says their conversations reportedly touched on personal topics, business and geopolitical tensions. The White House has referred all questions about the report to Musk, who dismissed it earlier today on his platform, but he did not explicitly deny it. Back with us tonight, Michael McFall, MSNBC international affairs analyst and former U.S. ambassador to Russia. Michael, before we dig into this Musk piece, I want to ask you about Israel carrying out retaliatory strikes on Iranian military targets. What do you think? Well, we expected this. We knew it was going to happen. Um, uh, so far from the reporting, it has been military targets. It has not been the nuclear facilities or energy. And that suggests to me that this is a limited attack and now balls in Iran's court. Uh, I suspect they'll do something. I hope it'll be minor and that that will be the end of it. All right. Now let's talk about Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin. Multiple White House officials told the Journal that they were never even aware of these conversations between these two men. A, does that make sense to you? And B, just your reaction to all of this. What did you think when you read this? Well, so I used to work at the White House under President Obama. I was the ambassador in Moscow. And in normal times with normal people, uh, uh, CEOs and even former presidents talk to leaders in Moscow. But this is not normal times. This is war. Uh, Elon Musk is calling up uh, somebody who has invaded Ukraine, who has annexed territory. He's the first leader to have done that in Europe since Hitler. Uh, he is terrorizing Ukrainians. He is kidnapping Ukrainian children. So it is like calling Hitler uh, during World War II. That's not right. Second, if it is true, and we need to hear more, but so far it appears true that he's not talking to the U.S. government about, about that, that's also strange. When other CEOs and other former presidents would talk to Russian leaders when I was in the government, they would tell us about it. They would help, and they would make sure that they were not saying something that contradicted U.S. foreign policy. And then there's a third piece to this. Mr. Musk has major contracts with the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got to decide what team he wants to be on. Is he on Team Russia or is he on Team USA? Because the guy that he is a surrogate for right now, Mr. Trump, has made it very clear that he wants friendly relations with Mr. Putin. So you can't have it both ways. You got to decide, are you on Team America or Team Putin? Or you can have it both ways because you might end up with a president in the United States who's on Team Russia. Russia. Here's my question, though. Elon Musk once supported Ukraine. We all remember he even provided Starlink terminals so Ukrainians could get on the Internet after the Russian invasion. But according to the journal, Musk's loyal his loyalties changed right around the time he started communicating with the Kremlin. What does that tell you? Well, and then uh, to remind you, about a year ago, we had reporting that he made a decision not to allow Starlink to be used mm -hmm. to help the, the Ukrainians attack uh, the, 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 the Russian uh, Navy, right, and Crimea. And so what you have, again, this is all reporting. I don't know this firsthand from Mr. Musk, but if the reporting is accurate, you have an independent, very rich actor making national security decisions. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want to privatize American foreign policy. I think that is a grave mistake. And I think people have to rethink whether this is such a good relationship. Um, and to your point, of course, he's gambling on Mr. Trump winning and therefore it's going to be all OK. But I hope that doesn't happen. And I hope when it, it doesn't happen that we rethink this relationship between our national security and the public sector and the private sector.